YouTube, it's Zoe, or read by Zoe, and as you can probably tell, I have been sick for about the past week, so sorry about the lack of videos, and also sorry about my voice right now. It sounds terrible, I'm so sorry, but let's get on with my June wrap-up. The first book that I read was The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. I actually listened to it on an audiobook when I was driving in my car, and I've come to the conclusion that I really dislike audiobooks. It's mostly because the narrator of the audiobook never matches up with the character voices that I hear in my head. Usually the narrator is much older than the character because the characters in YA novels are in their teens and the narrators are like in their late 20s or 30s. I was really into this book at the beginning. I thought it was so cool and action-packed, but as the story progressed I got less and less interested. I also didn't really enjoy the world of this book. I did like how it was very different from any other vampire book that I've read before, but sometimes it was just a little bit too confusing how if you are bit by a vampire you are infected, but if you wait in agony for a couple of weeks it gets out of your system and then you're fine and then if you drink human blood, I don't know. It was just a little bit too confusing and I don't think it was explained enough I did like how this was just a standalone novel, the entire story was in this one book, and I felt satisfied at the end of this book, satisfied that there was a complete story arc, and that's why I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was a reread because the month before I had read A Court of Thorns and Roses which got me into a reading slump, which also might have affected how I liked The Coldest Girl in Cold Town because I wasn't a reading slump, but I reread Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. I love this book so much, so obviously 5 out of 5 stars, I don't know why, but I can reread this like every single day and I find something new about it that I really enjoy, and Etienne, seriously, he makes me swoon every single time. I forget how great he is in this book until I reread it, and then I'm just like, wow, can you be real, please? Can I marry you and have lots of babies? We can live in France or England or San Francisco. I don't care. I just want to marry you. So, yes, 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen, my favorite, my hero. I love Jane Austen so much. I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed how it was different from any other Jane Austen book I've read. It is a satire on gothic novels of the time, and also it's just making fun of rich people and their ways, kind of, and, you know, I just, I really enjoyed it. I wasn't expecting to like it that much because you don't hear that many things about Northanger Abbey, except this month because everyone on booktube read this book this month. I don't know why. I really enjoyed the characters of Catherine and Mr. Tilney. I loved Mr. Tilney. He was so sarcastic and just funny. I really enjoyed him, but I hated Isabella and her brother, and just so many people in this book I hated, which I found funny at first that I wanted to root against so many people, but it got kind of annoying having to root against everyone but Catherine and Mr. Tilney. Everyone but those two, and even Mr. Tilney at times, and even Catherine at times, you kind of didn't like them. So I wish there were more people that you liked because it was a little bit of a downer when you were just hating against everyone. I did like the first half of this book better than the second, because the second was more of the gothic novel satire, but the first half was more of the known Jane Austen, they're going to balls, and they're meeting men, and they're dancing, and it's just more lighthearted, and the second half it got kind of slow, so it was a little harder to get through, but I did really enjoy this book. And the last four books that I read this month were all books from The Confessions of Georgia Nicholson by Louise Renison. I only have the first three that I read because I got them from the library, and the last one that I read, which is the eighth book in the series, I actually got online from the library and it was on my iPad. So I read books five through eight, and the names are Away Laughing on a Fast Camel. A lot of these names don't make any sense out of context, and they don't even make much sense in context, so you just gotta go with it. They have weird names. So Away Laughing on a Fast Camel. Then he ate my boy in trancers, startled by his furry shorts, 
and love is a many trousered thing. I gave them all 4 out of 5 stars, except that he ate my boy in transfers, which I actually gave 4.5 out of 5 stars. Not a lot really happens in these books by themselves, but this one had the most story and plot to it that I have encountered so far, so that's why I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. I don't feel like I can give them 5 out of 5 stars because alone, not a lot happens again, but they are really, really funny, and I love Georgia. I love all of the characters. I can't tell you what happens in these books because, again, they are books 5 through 8 and spoilers, but they surround a girl named Georgia Nicholson, and she is 14, 15, 16 years old in these books. She's in her middle teen years, and she is very, very self-centered, and she is boy crazy. She gets her first kiss in these books, and she gets her first boyfriend, and she's just growing up as a teenager. She has a crazy family and a crazy cat named Angus. She's also part of a friend group called the Ace Gang, and they are all really weird. They do weird dances. These books are very, very quick reads, and they are hilarious, so if you're looking for a lighthearted book that you will fly through in one night, definitely look for this series. You will have tons of fun! So those are the seven books that I read in June. Please leave below any videos you would like me to make in the future, and I'll talk to you later. 